Hello and welcome back to another XCOM 2 War of the Chosen campaign with your favorite streamer Saiken. Today we're going to continue the Choose to Lose campaign, a legendary Iron Man campaign that has various limitations including a bunch of new enemies with a better advent, a better chosen and so on, lower hit point progression and a few restrictions on both classes and items. Trying to beat the game nonetheless with niche builds and a bit of cunning. Today we're going to look into Operation Wolf Shriek, gathering survivors from an abandoned city. Our main enemies will be potentially the lost, but there might be more enemies than that. Got a scientist there, got a lot of intel, a sharpshooter and a specialist as bonus objectives. And I would really like to have that extra specialist and extra sharpshooter just to get a deeper pool of resources. So, whom are we going to take with us? It would be almost too easy to take the same exact team as before. Can't build any extra items because we're out of cash. But that nanoscale vest for sure is interesting. So, we'll treat Jessica Rabbit and Frodo as if they would not have any grenades. So, Wurz and Quick Feet are the only ones that can use theirs. I would say we're actually giving the flashbang grenade over to Frodo. So Frodo and Wurz are the only ones who can use theirs because Quick Feet has plenty of other options now. In terms of loadout, give him the DLC scatter gun. Isn't it looking fantastic together with that curved traditional sword? So we're doing fine. And I also like the improvised armor almost a little bit better. I don't know, the old style armor just looked more like actual armor and not like a pyjama. Good. No, that looks fine. Fantastic team. Let's jump directly into the mission. Okay, time to deploy. The Lost are a tricky bunch of individuals. It's always frame drop when we are landing. What makes the Lost so tricky is if you have no option to kill them fast enough, they will eventually overwhelm you. But luckily this time we are not forced to not use any shots. So we got our we got our VIP over there, fair enough. We potentially got one of the operatives over there. And another one over there. Oh boy, that is... It is lagging quite a bit. Okay, I'm expecting nothing short of an absolute massacre, massacre of a mission. Moving up. And that's one of those classic moments where you are trying to dash in. And due to unfortunate pot placements. You might lose the VIP. Confirmation on the VIP. Holy Remember, shit. Getting that VIP to the extraction point supersedes all other priorities. Don't let anything happen to him. Well, well, well. I'm not letting anything happen to anyone. But I can tell you. This guy over here. He's in for a tough time. Unfortunately, if we charge in and kill him, we can't move out afterwards. That is really unfortunate. 60% chance to hit him, but we wouldn't want to stand in the open, would we? No, we don't. So Jessica moves up. Theoretically, has a 50-50 on this guy. And I guess the main question is, will he take a shot onto our specialist or will he start with the lost? I think he will start with the lost. I hope so.
I mean, we could try to slash him, but we would be standing just as much in the open as he currently is. And that would not be acceptable. Fifty-fifty is not bad either. It's not really bad. Let's start. And just weakening him up a tiny bit. Like I said, 50-50 is not the end of the world. By no stretch of the imagination is that a good chance to hit. But it's also not really bad, if you know what I mean. You can take 50-50s, just don't expect anyone to uh, to die with it. That is 3 for 3 in this campaign from Mind Controls. Interesting. In the meantime, we're potentially going to get hit. No, we're not. Not yet. Is the loss going to kill him? <laughs> kidding me? He's not going to kill him? Uh -huh. Oh, this. Alright, let's think that through, shall we? Good, in terms of pistol shots... 80% chance to kill that lost. Decent chance to kill that lost. Okay, let's just start with it. Okay, that's why I wanted to start with it, because now charging in with a sword and just killing this guy is no longer an option. It would be absolutely idiotic to do that. Also don't want her to continue fighting against us, so we got to deal with that sooner or later. I don't like it, but we need to do that five foot step over here. Time to combat protocol the sectoid. Moving out. Good, that's four to six, not a hundred percent kill. That's one down. Can't move closer. That is indeed a problem. Enemy eliminated. Put a try on ammo. Out of ammo here. Okay, not perfect, but a decent cleanup for now. We will take maybe a hit. Well, so far he's doing quite well. Yep, the losses are indeed pretty sensitive to noise. What is wrong with you? That might be a kill. Also move and slash the guy. I don't want to use the second eight, uh, the second combat protocol yet. 
I mean, we could use a grenade as a backup just to explode the guy and kill him, which means in reality that 70% shot is okay because we had a backup plan. If it wouldn't work, just move here, use the grenade and done. Understood. Moving, out. Moving in. Jessica Rabbit takes a good position over there. Moving up. Okay, so far so good. Got one pack and a potential swarm that is going to come in. Menace one five, you've got the primary targets in tow. Secure any additional operatives if possible, but make sure. Of course, we're going to secure the additional operatives, and that's not only possible; that is mandatory. Got another operative over here and one back there, which means we're going to go for high ground and we're going to do that fiercely. Okay, cool, good, decent start. Time to clean these guys up. Not sure why anyone would say that snipers are not working well. Of course, if you are moving them and are not careful with your position, then they are not as good as other units. But if you have high ground, you know what you're doing, then they are just absolutely fantastic. Could sort of hit this here, set the car on fire, and force the sector to move or die. I think that's fine. I'll do that mainly to trigger another swarm, and secondly, to make sure that his mind control that he's potentially trying will be dearly regretted okay another swarm is incoming more kills means more honor for us fifty 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 and forty percent well the dashers will not be able to reach us, so I am okay with ignoring them for now. We potentially won't get a better shot than this one here. Might as well take it. Alright, the sector is almost down. Hunkering down. And Rodo takes a position at the window. Look at you. He is indeed fleeing. Good. More loss are attracted by us. And is that yet another group of lots? Yeah. Apparently those here seem to be Uber loss. I don't know. They have those green nasty eyes. One arm or one hit point. Okay, okay, okay. Loud explosion eventually triggers even more lost. So let's get that dasher down. Fantastic.
And we're taking a couple more dashers. That was a bomber. Okay. I do begin to understand what the bomber means. That is a nasty new addition, the bombers. Okay, so first things first. We gotta somehow deal with those guys here. Wards moves up. I still think that the high ground will be advantageous for us. Enemy destroyed. Takes care of that enemy. Out. And we're moving out. So that we can claim the balcony next turn. At the same time, Moving out. this is not going to be easy. Okay, so we see a couple of losts. Let's try to eliminate as many of them as possible. Damn it. Our 90% shot failed. Could charge in and try to kill this guy, but we wouldn't be able to completely block them off, which is the main problem here. Confirm. Moving up as a protection for our VIP. And that's an overwatch. Next turn we're going to go for that balcony. There's yet another swarm potentially, potentially going to come in. How could you miss with a shotgun in close quarters? Well, I suppose we're about to find out, right? another bomber one of those things that we don't want to trigger really all right let's start with a bomber And yet another swarm. I think the whole boomer thing might be a bit of a setup as it will only trigger more and more losts. There are good news and bad news. The good news is they no longer can engage us from here as far as I'm concerned. And that's about it from the good news. Kill confirmed. Weapons burning ammo fast. Target neutralized. Ammo back in. Good, ammo is out.
We're hitting a couple of the loss, but none of them really work out well. I think what we can immediately do is start uh, blocking the axis over here. And now it's a matter of chance. These guys have three hit points. Eventually we will only roll minimum damage. So far we're doing surprisingly well in our position. I can see a bomber down there, which is going to be a problem. Alright, reloaded. But in terms of moving up, eventually, again, we'll need to move up further and get over there after we've eliminated the swarm downstairs. I don't know what's happening. All of the loss are activating at the same time. And those bombers or boomers are just creating more and more losses. The idea is okay. I'm not sure if it has been fully thought through. Like you're ending up with creating more and more losses that are charging in. Okay, that is new. They can now climb walls, apparently. That indeed is new. Okay. Luckily, we do have a sniper that is not running out of ammunition. Good, so far so good. Jessica is doing well. No longer a threat. Fantastic. Target neutralized. I like the idea that they can climb walls. Which makes high ground kind of defense is like the one that I'm trying to pull off here a bit more di difficult. It's not automatically a strategy to completely block them off. At the same time, it's not a bad strategy. It just makes it a bit more vulnerable. There is counterplay option. All right, let's just first and foremost try to destroy the balcony. Did not fully work out. Try that again. Now it worked out. Good copy. Moving on target. Dangerous position here, I don't trust the fire. Enemies down. Moving to Overwatch. 
All right, fantastic. We got two overwatches, only a handful of loss down there. And we're eventually starting to see them thin out. I like the whole notion that this is actually a bit harder than you normally would see it. Can't fully move all the way up there. Okay, so let me get the right angle here. Still a couple of enemies down there. This here should give us line of sight, shouldn't it? I was about to say. Alright, yet another boomer. Okay, we got a good position overall. Moving over here. Just really want to make sure that we're having a safe position. And this here is at least going to kill one more of them. Good, perfect. So we're standing safely up here. The explosion downstairs will eventually get another wave of enemies and then we can proceed. Fight is longer than I would have expected and maybe I'm making it more difficult than it needs to be. But those boomers take the whole lost thing to a different level. Essentially, as soon as one of those guys is within the wave, there's almost automatically spawning yet another one. Alright, this guy is burning, which means he's potentially going to die. Good, fantastic. Loud s explosion draws yet another swarm closer. Isn't that exactly what we wanted to hear? <laughs> okay, sniper shot misses on top of it. Oh yeah, I wanted to move forward. I honestly wanted to move forward. I swear. I was like, it's time to grab these other two and just move on. But how am I supposed to do that if there are 150 billion losts? On my way. Okay. One down. Thousands to go. <laughs> Trying to sort of eliminate the dashers. Adjusting sights. Enemies down. But yeah, maybe we're even getting a couple of promotions. And I promise you guys, I'm not doing this for the promotions. This is just taking much, much longer than I would have anticipated. Those bombers or boomers are completely changing the ball game 
reload, take a couple of shots. Didn't work out. Okay, fair enough. Normally, losts automatically die once they burn. There's nothing that they can do. They fiercely run around and then e eventually collapse. Interesting to see that that has been apparently softened. Who's burning? Are you kidding me? Did the lost really just say, I'm burning, I'm burning? Okay, Jessica did miss another 80% shot. Just trying to clean these uh, guys up. Oh, I know who's burning. Our operative over there. Well, can't change that for now. He needs to essentially hunker down. Back online. All right, Wards, come on. Just eliminate a couple of these guys. Can't be that difficult. Care of. Thank you. She's proving my point. Or not. Or not. It's like a total zombie ap uh, zombie apocalypse. And I'm not saying that I'm not enjoying it. I like fighting the losts. They always were a great addition. But the whole boomer thing just takes it one step too far. Are we really going to uh, lose this operative because he can't hunker down? Or even worse, we're saving the guy and he has like 40 days of, of recovery time. All right. Let's please try to get the... I'm just trying to get the guys down. How is it possible that none of the shots will land? Well, sometimes it is what it is. I will need to find a win of opportunity. But I can't just charge into them. We'll take even more damage, and that one operative is not worth it. Okay, it seems for once that they have slowed down. Okay, he is finished being on fire. And finally, finally. Moving up. We're going to double move. All right, for now, things are looking good. Of course, because every single lost in this city here we were looking for but there are still others in the area all right russ with us russ welcome to the team it's been a rough one buddy Will do. but don't worry we'll get you out of here in one piece hopefully warts moves up Moving. and now it's time to leave our yeah defended fort And we're fighting on the train. Got it covered. Got it covered. Come get some. 
I could almost see, yep, there is another, there is another pack of Advent right here. Good, we're being swarmed yet again, but that was, that was really foreseeable. Okay, fair enough. So far we're doing good. Let's try to get rid of the dashers first. The one thing that you shouldn't do is panic if you're fighting against the loss. Take the dashers out first. They are typically the ones that will reach you. Unfortunate. Ports reloads. And knowing that there is another pack Enemy just down. waiting for us, of course we're not going to move any further. Russ moves in. Time to assert dominance. Nice little headshot there. Moving to position. At the same time, quick feet. Making sure that that dasher has learned his lesson. Another headshot. Overwatch. Anchor down, and we just gotta weather the storm here, guys. Go to reloads. Enemy is still up. Okay, fair enough. Wards, overwatches, and we're doing fine. As long as there are no boomers. We're doing fine. Interesting naming, now that I think about it. Naming an enemy Boomer, which seems to be one of the latest insults on the internet. Maybe because the guys are so old that they are actually Boomers. Who knows? Fantastic. That Overwatch trap worked like a charm. Moving indeed over here. And we can see that there is another pack of Advent down there. Enemy destroyed. Russ is starting to clean up house up here. Okay, moving all the way over. Target eliminated. Locked and loaded. Good, fantastic. Moving up. Jessica Rabbit reloads. Slowly moving up. Roger that. And we're continuing to reload. Orders confirmed. Moving out. I'll leave that one pack uh, non-triggered at this point. Not that we need any more action. 
if it really would start to engage, we would be more than ready. I think we can just bypass it for now. Get the last soldier in this mission and then essentially boogie out. Good, there is another potential specialist over here and I see absolutely no reason not to take them with us. Russ moves up. Closing on target position now. So does the rest of the crew. Rolling. All right. Roto moves over here. Over. I think we got a solid position up here, knowing farewell that there is a group of enemies Going downstairs. Down not even sure maybe they are maybe they are already engaged who knows Russ begins to move over there are no additional VIPs or resistance operatives working in that area you should be clear to move for extraction good that is pretty much exactly what I wanted to hear. All right, Wards moves over. Quick feet also moves over. VIP moves over. And Jessica Rabbit moves over. Of course, they couldn't just let us escape, could they? Moving in. And now they're flanking us. Of course. There's also a swarm surprisingly nearby Understood. yeah but I'm not going to have it we are just going to rush bum rush them collecting the loot PCS agility, that will be helpful. Target down. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't want to just rush Already out there. yet. Seems to be just another lost on there. Now. Reload Overwatch. Oh, And another no swarm. Threat. If we can get those guys down, we can evac safely. And maybe we'll, e we'll even get a promotion or two out of it. Like I said, I'm not doing it for the promotions, but it just so happened to be an absolute shooting gallery. And for whatever reason, of course, we have triggered yet another lost. Good. It seems we do not even have a choice at this point. Let's move Hunk over here, just so that we're a bit closer to the exit. Alright, fair enough. Moving 
Good, we're moving into a really nice open position. And holy shit, Quick Feet is on point today with a shotgun, long range distance. Doesn't give a shit about what any of those guys want. And just says it's killing time. Alright, that's one down. Yeah, so far it's going good. Like now we do have the lost sun of control. I think the boomer are actually pre-spawned. They are not coming in the waves. Which makes sense in that, uh, in a way that they would not, like, escalate the issue further. But boy, oh boy, that's a nasty mechanic. Essentially blowing up cover and at the same time making the whole spawn go even faster. I think we're we're good. Everybody can leave now. Hunk is running. Jessica's running. Everybody's running now. Longer mission than I would have anticipated. Holy moly! Fifty minutes of lost action. I start to like the a better advent, just versatility of even the very beginning enemies. Those whole boomer uh, loss were an interesting spin to it. And now that I've also understood that they wouldn't come in the additional packs, or at least at some point stop coming in them, it does not create a permanent issue. But yeah. Having killed 80 enemies in the third mission, that's a bit stiff. Good, we are landing. Let's see how much face we have in our own troops. Three further promotions. What is happening, guys? We're getting quite a few promotions. So, naturally, after medical protocol, I would go for revival protocol. So, Frodo here is going to have haywire protocol. It's going to be one of those kind of aggressive... Uh, operatives it's going to to be a fully almost combat hacker type of specialist typically not playing that sort of specialist but we'll see how how well it works and yeah that would be long watch for sure but in this case we're going for return fire yay maybe i will even build something around that maybe i'll offer them a bit more armor and then a really solid pistol some some way of surviving shots and then essentially you will get return fire going not sure if this is going to be a, uh, is going to work really well typically you don't want your sniper to be shot at all and it only triggers once per turn so eh. It's really not a good ability. Good. Here I would typically take Blade Master just to to the additional sword damage and the extra aim. And Phantom is really suboptimal because it also does not allow you to go for Overwatch traps because that guy usually does not get spotted out. However, Phantom is the poor man's reaper and if we skill it, quick feet can be our scout. And it's not the end of the world. Phantom is actually okay-ish.
Good, we got a, another stock. So maybe we're just going to work with a lot of stocks. And we got some agility going. Also a scientist, which is fantastic. Now we're going to bond the two soldiers. You know, I was thinking we might wait to see what the training center brings, but F it. We're going to bond them. Got two further soldiers going for us. Hunk on the one hand side, a specialist. Let's give him a real professional look. And with that, I mean, of course, color code him green. So he's going to be the second specialist of this run. And we got Russ over here, gravely wounded sharpshooter. I think needs a color coding as well. All right, works like a charm. Got two sharpshooters, two specialists. That's a strange team, shall I say? Normally I wouldn't go onto a mission with two sharpshooters, two specialists, but yeah, it's a strange run. What can I say? I'm really looking forward for those special abilities once we do have a training center to see which of the soldiers kind of uh, can be built completely different than normal. There's another set of rookies, which I don't know if we really need it. We could use supplies much more because currently we only have a normal grenade and a flashbang grenade and I want to get some more items. Also with supplies we can build another building, so that might be worth something. I think the resistance ring can be a fantastic second building. Oh, I wouldn't speed it up though. Instead, let's add, excavate over here. 10 more days and I don't know, guerrilla tactic school, resistance ring, maybe infirmary, nah, proving grounds potentially next. And then we need to get energy anyways and yeah a couple of other buildings training center is still a bit further away all right here we go 50 supplies that's not a lot a soldier on the other hand could be good it won't be a sniper or a specialist, so might as well be another ranger or another grenadier. Nothing on the low. And before anything happens, of course, there is a nice retaliation mission. If I'm not mistaken, our soldiers are all tired. <laughs> Perfect time to meet the chosen. because afterwards everybody is going to be wounded. On the flip side, we got a few corporals and a sergeant with Frodo. So we're actually making quite a bit of progress. Just give the word and I'll In terms of there. building items, medkit could be helpful. Nanoscale vests wouldn't be too bad as well. I mean, a med kit could effectively help us to stabilize someone who gets one shot. So might as well use it for it. Also provides some immunities. So maybe we're going with the classical route and going for a med kit. And then we're afterwards going for some armor. That's not a bad idea. We don't have any medical protocol at this point so having something that would keep our soldiers alive might not be the worst idea resistance communication happens in one day this here looks fantastic specifically the fast resistance ring will be helpful next month gts it's good as soon as we get it on board because i do have a lot of rookies that need more training 
Proving grounds, on the other hand, could be valuable. The sparks are an actual alternative, and having them would be helpful, quite helpful. Because I'm already seeing that we do have fatigue issues. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, guys, that's the end of the third episode. I hope you enjoyed the slugfest against uh, the Lost. And now we're going to see which Chosen we're fighting against. My money is sort of on the Assassin. Loki expecting her to be the first one always. But yeah, let's see how it is going to work out. Take care, leave a comment down below and hit that sm smash actually, that like button. Bye bye.